Marjane Machko. Sorry. Uh, Marjane Machko and Margareta Tenberg for inviting me uh, to give this talk. And I hope the, the audience, that the audience really will find it informative. Uh, okay. Before I begin my presentation, I would like to pay tribute to Serge Clausiou and Maurizio Tosi. Uh, together, they have pioneered uh, work in the United Arab Emirates and in the Sultanate of Oman, first separately, then from uh, 1985 as part of a joint research program, the Joint Hat Project, which under their leadership has brought to, together a generation of researchers on the proto-restory of uh, Eastern Arabia. Work in the Ras al area, a view of which uh, can be seen in the background and which I'll take about later, uh, has been at the earth of this collaboration for almost 30 years and in the cliff um, overlooking the site, you can still see the silhouettes of these two explorers watching over the heritage of Eastern Arabia. I recommend that everyone read the newly revised version of their book, In the Shadow of the Ancestor, recently published by the Omani Ministry of Culture uh, and Archaeo Press, which offers a richly illustrated uh, vision of I will very quickly present the environmental context of the Omani Peninsula for those who wish to delve further into the subject or find uh, sources, references on my, of my remarks. Uh, I suggest bibli bibliographical reference uh, without claiming co completeness in the small insert below. The Omani Peninsula doesn't exist as a political entity, but the term is used by archeologists and geographers to refer to the eastern part of Arabian Peninsula, stretching from the islands of Abu Dhabi in the north west to Masira Island in the southeast. This region is now politically div divided between the northern Sultanate of Oman and the United Arab Emirates. It's an area of about uh, 150,000 square kilometers and it's it is uh, isolated from the rest of Arabia by the vast Rubal Kali desert, uh, which form a natural barrier to the west. It borders the Persian Gulf to the northwest, the Gulf of Oman to the northeast, and the Arabian Sea to the east. And it is crossed by a major mountain system, the Ajar Mountain, uh, which peak at almost 3,000 meters. This mountain forms a real barrier between the coastal plain and the interior. Um, at the of a few natural passage here indicates in a red by red arrows. The plain which borders the Gulf and the Arabian Sea occupies about 3% of the territory. The mountain make up 15% uh, and the rest is sand and desert and occupies 82% uh, uh, of the total area. The current climate is generally characterized by very severe aridity with an average rainfall of less than 100 millimeters, very high temperature and considerable, considerable evaporation. Only in the mountains does uh, higher precipitation occur. During the Holocene, the climate was subject to strong fluctuation after a humid phase that began about uh, 10,000 years ago. It gradually became drier about uh, 4000 BC to approach to the climate about uh, around uh, 2000 uh, BC. On the East Coast, the upwelling of deep water is a source of a great abundance of fish as it rises a large amount of phytoplankton at the base of a rich food chain. On this coast, there are still lagoon, hall, uh, sometimes associated with mangroves. Also, the flow of the wadis that flow into the lagoon is much less intense than in the Middle Holocene. Climate variability during the Holocene may have resulted in the intermittent changes in shorelines, rainfall and diversity of fishery resources or vegetation cover, including the appearance of mangroves during wetter episodes. Due to the dry climate, the region has limited land resources it is divided into a variety of exploitable ecological niches, 
Uh, this diagram on the left shows the uh, different ecosystem, plant formation and ecological niches in Oman on a trend trip from the sea to the desert areas. Different photos of the ecosystem show the diversity of niche that exists in the region. This fragmentation of resources required specific adaptation strategies on the part of population, in particular the establishment of a system based on mobility and change even in ancient, ancient times. Archaeological research over the last 40 years has highlighted the original development path of Eastern Arabian societies during the Holocene, and especially between the 6th and the, the end of the 3rd millennium BC, um, that is to say between the Neolithic and the early Bronze Age, the periodization of which is based on the typology of the recognized tombs the Hafid period between about 2200 uh, BC and 2700 BC is characterized by tower tombs, the first of which were found on Jebel Hafid, uh, while the Yumanna period between 2700 and 2000 BC is accompanied by the appearance of monumental tombs on the, the island of the same name. During this millennia, environmental conditions deteriorate due to the drying of the climate, and Eastern Arabia is characterized by a particular culture. Uh, first, the emergence of uh, an atypical Neolithic around uh, the seventh to the sixth millennia, based on nomadic pastoralism and coastal hyper specialization. The groups lived by herding, fishing, and gathering, and it seems that they were quite mobile with the movement uh, depending on the seasonal availability of the resources in different areas. The non-camp consists of youths, um, made by, uh, sorry, um, youths made by of uh, light material, sometimes with associated earth, dumping on storage pits and activity areas. Most of the identified sites are located on the coast where the abundance of fish resources may have favored settlement in the long term. The Bronze Age is marked by major changes, which Clausiou and Tozi called the Great Transformation. There is expansion and intensification of trade networks with neighboring region. There is increase in population and the expansion of settlements inland as evidenced by the monumental town throughout the uh, occupied uh, territory. There is emergence of villages and monumental architecture, and there is the first evidence of the development of oasis agriculture. This period is also marked by the intensification of, uh, intensification, sorry, of long distance trade with neighboring civilization like Mesopotamia, Iran, and Deus, and by a social complexification reflected in tombs, practices, uh, imperial practices becoming collective uh, and intrinsically monumental, and also in the craft specialization with uh, the emergence of technical innovations such as copper metallurgy and later pottery, the production of sto uh, soft stone vessels uh, or jewelry element made of metal, uh, stone, or shell. The study of burials is particularly appropriate in this context because proto-historic societies invested little and late in residential architecture, unlike tombs, which since the Neolithic and especially uh, during the Bronze Age were territorial markers intended to be visible and permanent. The human remains in grave are a direct testimony of life stories that can be approached with the help of biological anthropology, they tell us about the lifestyle, diet, health status, and demographics of the group. But burial are also invaluable, an, an invaluable source for approaching other aspects of ancient population, such as their social organization, their cultural identity, or the exchange network in which um, they participated. The archaeological uh, the anthrop uh, anthropological approach allow us to combine the two dimensions, the cultural and the biological. Um, as we will see, human remains in burials from uh, the Oman Peninsula are often poorly preserved, especially in collective, collective graves that characterize the early Bronze Age. 
This poor preservation complicates traditional bioanthropological approaches. At the same time, I hope to show that these graves and tombs and the remains they contain represent an immense potential for knowledge about the proto-historic societies of Arabia. As they contain information about their way of life, but also their social structure and its development. Uh, one of the most important issues for the Arabian, Arabian Neolithic is the recognition of the subsistence pattern of the groups, which seems to have varied according uh, to the region. The problem is that very few inland sites are known, as the interland has been, has been much less explored uh, than the coastal areas. Moreover, sites known in the interior are mostly limited to assemblages of lithic soils often uh, uncovered by deflation, which provide little information about the economy of the groups. On the other hand, many sites are known on the coast where coastal resources are favorable eco ecological niches, mangrove and lagoons. Uh, they were very attractive poles and where human settlements seem to have been more intensive. intensive. The map of known uh, burial sites clearly shows this imbalance between coast and interland of the approximately 20 Neolithic burial sites. Uh, 18, 80, 18 sorry, are located on the coast and three inland. In addition to this imbalance, there are also many gaps relating to the early and middle Neolithic. The oldest human remains found so far are from Faya 15 and Marawa 11, with context ranging from the seventh uh, to the sixth millennium. For the fifth millennium, we know only six sites and set, uh, seven other um, sites are less precisely dated and belong to the fifth to fourth millennia. The remaining six sites can be attributed to the fourth millennium. In other words, there are no data for the beginning of the Neolithic in the region and there is very little evidence for the middle Neolithic, while the late Neolithic is better represented. As for numbers, the map of the right, on, on the right shows the number of individuals at uh, various uh, sites. It's clear that there are currently two main sites, Al Buhais uh, 18 and Ras Al Amra 5, which contain large numbers of individuals. Other rare ones containing a few dozen and that most others contain only a few remains. All these shortcomings need to be taken into account as they highlight the problem of uh, representativeness of data in, in archaeology. The evidence currently available suggests that the economy of the group inhabiting the interland during the Neolithic was primarily based on nomadic pastoralism. There is evidence of cattle, sheep, and goat breeding as early as the sixth millennium. Flint arrowheads found near ancient uh, waterholes and funnel assemblages from the lowland and foothills indicate that hunting wild animals may also have contributed to the subsistence of these communities. On the coast, the deposits are mainly shell middens. You can see an example uh, below right. People prefer to settle in areas with diverse ecosystems, such as the Muth of Wadi, where mangrove, uh, mangrove swamp or lagoon allowed the exploitation of different uh, ecological niches. In this place, livelihoods seem to have been based on fishing, catching marine animals, raising livestock, and collecting shellfish from the sea and mangroves. What do the bioecological data and the material culture of uh, the known settlement and graveyard tell us about this population in the interland and on the coast. In the Futil region, the presence of water sources and pastures seems to have, to have favored settlement during wetter clim climatic episodes. For example, the largest known inland site, uh, Al uh, 18, in the Emirate of Sharjah, has no fossilized uh, water source that probably attracted ancient population. Excavation carried out by Heinz Peter Jokman and his team from the University of Tübingen have uncovered the remains of peats, earth, and domestic waste around a large burial complex used around uh, 4500 BC, where almost 600 people were buried in pits. While most of the grave was single and primary grave, the excavator also documented several, several multiple graves 
which will be discussed after, as well as secondary grave in which the remains of people who died elsewhere were buried. According to the animal remains found, the livelihood of the group was mainly provided by livestock, mainly sheep and goats, and to a lesser, lesser extent cattle. Uh, the small proportion of wild animals, donkey, dromedary, oryx, gazelle, indicate that hunting played a subordinate role at this site. The examination of the dental condition carried out by uh, Enrique Kiswetter completes the archaeological, archaeological data, no caries, very few antemortem tooth losses or abscess, and a high rate of tooth wear, indicating a low carbohydrate diet and the abrasive net nature of the, of the food. Recent isotopic analysis of individual buried at Albuhais suggests that the site was a seasonal station within a mobile pastoral circle whose other stations were located in the mountains. There's some evidence to reconstruct this uh, seasonal movement. The mortality curve of the sheep and goats suggests that the group occup occupied the site only in spring. In addition, where the gravel from the Aja mountain was found in several secondary burials, suggesting to the excavators that the primary processing of the bodies took place at other stations near the mountain wadi. Regular connection to the coast are also evident um, from the numerous shells in the ornament and clothing accessories uh, with which the dead uh, were adorned in the, in the grave. You can see an example uh, below. The population buried in Albu Ace experienced recurrent episodes of violence related to conflicts between rival group or within the group itself. Of the 341 skulls observed, 11% uh, bear trace of trauma. Men are affected twice as often as women and children under 15 aren't affected. Among the post parent bones, 3.3% uh, show consolidated fractures, mainly on the bones on, of the upper limbs. The site has also a very high proportion of multiple burials, uh, as here below, where two women and three men were buried at the same time, indicating frequent mortality crisis, uh, perhaps related to conflict and a desire also to group individuals together in death. Further evidence of solidarity within the group is found in the practices of care, uh, three cases of healed preparation, one example uh, is shown on the right, testify to suc successful surgical treatments, suggesting great technical mastery. At the end of the fifth millennium, the site was abandoned and the inland area seemed to be deserted, perhaps due to the drying out of the climate, which would have affected the nomad nomadic uh, lifestyle. During this period, Settlements seem to intensify along the coast of the Gulf and the Arabian Sea, as in the promontory of uh, Ras Al Amra and the mangrove of Kourou, the present capital of the at the present capital of the Sultanate of Oman, where a dozen sites are known. In this area, human occupation is continuous from the mid sixth millennium and intensifies from the fifth millennium, as shown in the dragon on, on right, which reclaims the density of. Uh, C14 gates. One of these sites, Ras Al Amra 5 or RH5, dated to the fourth millennium, was excavated in the 80s by the Italian archaeological mission led by Sandro Salvatori and Paolo Biaggi. Res resumed the, the excavation in 2005, uh, uh, since 2005, in collaboration uh, with Mapo Gianni Marcucci and the team of the University of Bologna, led by Maurizio Tosi. RH5 has uncovered traces of numerous domestic structures, earth, shelter, pit, and earth, and activities areas. In addition, an important burial complex has been uncovered with almost uh, 150 excavated graves. These are graves in pits where the dead were placed protruded on the side. The material culture shows a variety of tools used for fishing or catching marine animals, hook, uh, nets, net weight, sorry, projected point and throwing weapons. Plants uh, were made into ropes or nets. 
shells were also used to make jewelry or tools found in association with the dead in, uh, in the graves. As the material culture suggests, the archaeological study carried out uh, in the 80s by Margaret Yopan indicates a predominance of marine resources in the mid-yet. Uh, shellfish, are, shellfish are also very present. And domestic animals, sheep, goats, and cattle make up only a quarter of the studied as assemblage, uh, and the role of hunted animal is minimal. The study of um, animal remains of this site is currently the subject of a program of, uh, of research in collaboration with several uh, researchers from the Museum d'Histoire Naturelle in France. Uh, recently, Anaïs Marast and Kevin Edou have completed their PhD dissertation of fish remains from site in Oman and the, the Emirates as part of the research program INR uh, Neo Arabia, directed by Jean Francois Berger. These studies offer a new perspective on the evolution of fishing practices uh, during the Neolithic. In addition to meat resources, the site's inhabitants could have consumed certain wild plants, such as jujube. Uh, jujube, the diffuse of which numerous cherry stones uh, have, be, have been found on the site. In the grave, we, are new, we found uh, numerous mineral, mineralized plant elements such as fabrics, ropes, cords, nets, or mats, which show that the use of plants was diverse. However, uh, geochemical analysis carried out uh, in collaboration with Antoine Zazo and several individuals buried in, in the seed's grave put the contribution of plants to the diet into perspective, revealing a diet based mainly on the consumption of marine products, suggesting low mobility of the group or confined to the, the coastline. This contradicts the usual picture of Neolithic population that moves seasonally. At average fire, it appears that occupation of the site was more probably annual. This is also indicated by the analysis of the orientation of the body in the graves. Uh, Salvatore had found that the heads of the deceased were oriented towards the rising, rising sun, and depending on the azimuth by hair, it assumed a preferential use of the cemetery in winter. In fact, uh, when we, we review the data, the curve shows a Gaussian distribution suggesting uh, that the deceased may have been buried on the site throughout the, the year. The biological study of the human remains found in the grave of Average 5 and other analytic sites on the coast provided valuable information about diet and feeding habits, but also about activities. Above all, the analysis of oral condition was very revealing. First, uh, we were very struck by the complete absence of carious lesion and a low frequency of abscesses and antemortem uh, loss. Uh, these pathologies are usually associated with agricultural population with high carbohydrate consumption. Therefore, wild fruit also consumed during the Neolithic were probably not a major component of the diet, which is consistent with the result of geochemical analysis. In contrast, Neolithic coastal groups show a high frequency of calculus, suggesting a high protein diet. In addition, the groups generally show high toothware, suggesting frequent consumption of abrasive and unprocessed, uh, unprocessed uh, foods, such as uh, dry fish. They also exhibit frequent fractures and chipping, which could also be related to the presence of hard particles in the diet. Some non masticatory stigmata were also noted, uh, such as grooves on the upper part of the crown, um, notches, and unusual wear. They revealed that the teeth were used as tools to prepare ropes or to process skin. Finally, uh, the analysis of the enamel hypoplasia defect, uh, defects that are due to, the, to metabolic stress during the tooth formation, shows that Neolithic groups on the coast were fre frequently exposed to phys physiological stress episodes. Some individuals show signs of infectious disease, disease sorry, like um, this, uh, uh, this child, on the, the femur of a child uh, in the center. In line with this data, a very high incidence of spina bifida was found at RH5, 
detoxification defect of the sacrum is congenital and could indicate a high endogamy rate in the group. On the other hand, it could also reflect a deficiency uh, of folic acid, which is present uh, in some plants. All these indicators suggest that the heavy dependence on resources whose supply was uncertain and the low diversity of food consumed may have led to deficiency symptoms and probably recurrent hunger episodes among the coastal groups. This condition may have led to conflict between rival groups. This is indicated by the discovery of a shark tooth projectile points embedded in the vertebra and the high number of multiple burials at the site, uh, nearly 20%. Violent episode uh, regularly interrupted the life of Neolithic fishing communities on the coast of Eastern Arabia, as shown by the Haurohead found uh, by Sophie Meristin in uh, multiple burial from the Emirate of Malkowain, but also by the numerous parad uh, fractures um, that I've cataloged in a group buried at Wadi Shab on the coast of the Gulf of Oman. The tombs of Ras al -Amra also tell us something about the spirituality uh, of the communities. Deposit of turtles are common in the tombs. More than half of the grave contain turtle bones, and in thir uh, 13 of the grave, one or most more turtle heads were placed uh, next to the deceased. Here are two examples where these remains were very numerous, dozens of mandibles in the, the tomb, uh, the grave uh, 410 on the left, and eight heads in the grave. Uh, 411 below right, uh, which I will discuss later. In addition, rune pebbles clearly resembling sea turtle eggs are found very frequently, as here in the land of a young woman buried with two newborns on, on the top of the picture. The accumulation of rune pebbles on certain graves is clearly a reminiscent of a turtle nest. The role of this animal in beliefs and burial ritual is undisputed, but what significance it had for the community remains unknown. In any case, we can imagine that the sea turtle, which comes out of the sea to lay its, egg on, on its eggs on the beach and whose young return to the sea after hatching, must have played an important spiritual role for this fishing community. A parallel ritual involving sea creatures exists at the site of Akab in the Emirate of Umar Kouen, contemporaneous with the tombs of Kwasalamra, where a 10 square meter platform of dugong bones was associated with many rare, exotic, and uh, valuable items, and one level of which had been impregnated with ochre. I refer you to the publication of, by, by Mary and the collaborators uh, on this remarkable uh, site. What do the burial tell us about the social, social organization of the groups? The discovery of grave at Average 5 that are more richly furnished than others, whether with furniture or with finds of animals, uh, fauna, and the re-examination of previously published data have enabled me to put into perspective the hitherto claimed completely egalitarian character of this society. It seemed that a certain degree of social differentiation, regardless of age or gender, characterized the treatment of the dead, with more investment in certain burials than in most others. This is a case, for example, of this tomb, in which a richly decorated man uh, was covered with numerous deposits of fish, egg tur uh, turtle heads, part of marine and terrestrial mammals, pebbles, and elements of plant material. This particularly well-documented tomb will be reconstructed at the future Oman across Ages National Museum in Mana, near Nizwa in Oman. We find that children are often uh, the object of special care. Here is an example of, uh, of a tomb with a, with a child adorned with a necklace, uh, which was covered with a garment or cloth decorated with a series of shell and stone beads. The discovery allows us to verify the status of certain so-called isolated beads found in a dozen of graves, which could in fact belong to textiles. However, 
the spatial uh, analysis presented here uh, on, the, on the right shows that there is not specific, uh, no specific grouping of the most richly endowed tombs represented by the darkest diamond on this uh, image. Furthermore, the range of objects deposited with the dead is quite limited in terms of type of objects, materials, or techniques used, which leads to uh, this complexity being put into perspective compared to the following period. This uh, naturally leads me to mention the change that marked the end of the analytic period. Toward the end of the fourth millennium, necropolises consisting of, of dozens or even hundreds of stone tombs were built uh, of all over the area, in the foothills, in the wadi plains, and in the coastal areas. They were first discovered by Geoffrey Bibi on the Jebel Afit, which gave the period its name. They're usually um, located on the highest points of the landscape, on terraces, cliffs, or elevation. Because of their conspicuous character, they have been considered by researchers as marker of the resources exploited by communities at the beginning of the Bronze Age. Also, they show great morphological and architectural variability. Their appearance and funerary function make them part of a large-scale megalithic phenomenon that shaped the entire Arabian Peninsula and its northern fringes during prehistory, as shown in this map. Um, that I created from published uh, data and satellite imagery. Hundreds of thousands of similar monuments are found in the Sinai Peninsula and in the Negev, uh, Nawami, Southern Jordan, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and uh, in Yemen. They are distributed on, on a very large scale, more than 3 million uh, square kilometers. The temporal extent of the burial, uh, this burial phenomenon, the lack of absolute dating and standard, standardized uh, excavation coupled with uh, regional fragmentation of research uh, prevents for the time being the production of a global ev evolutionary synthesis that takes uh, all local variants into account. Although there is very little absolute dating for this grave, the synthesis can be made from the available data. Uh, and it shows that they appeared as early as the Neolithic in the sixth millennium, and that they are associated with the first uh, nomadic pastoralists who settled in the region. Overall, there is a peak at the turn of the fourth to, to the third millennium, uh, where they seem to be associated with the beginning of the Bronze Age metallurgy and uh, the bronze metallurgy, sorry, and was this uh, agriculture, but I'll come back to that. And in the Iron Age, they are regularly reused after a period of disuse. They are therefore an ex exceptional gift for style uh, for tracing both settlement dynamics and network of exchange and circulation of ideas and for documenting the maintenance or disuse of burial uh, sites over time. While early research has assigned the, this burial uh, in the Omanian Peninsula to the Bronze Age, more recent work, for example, by Kim Williams uh, in Dunk or myself in Chia, finds that some burial, uh, burial months are older. The architectural variability seen uh, at some site may reflect this chronological development. To build such a tomb, it's estimated that uh, two or three people are needed, and that they spend several days or weeks on it, depending on the case. The stones are acquired from rocks on site, and the stones aren't or very rowdy rocked, uh, but selected according to a recurring format. Construction requires a lot of planning and expertise. Some sites are an exception with facade of a rafted block that anticipate the construction of the following period. Several researchers have therefore documented so-called so uh, transi transitional tombs. It must be said that the study of burial practices associated with uh, this tomb is limited by the recurrent poor preservation of human remains. This is due to a combination of factors, the type of deposition, uh, no burial but a, a deposit, the dry climate of the region, uh, to make a rapid mineralization of bone remains and various intervention, intervention that followed 
the deposition of the deceased. Uh, vol voluntary reworking associated with the management of the tombs, looting, dis dismemberment of the tombs, to reuse materials or later use for a burial related or non burial related purpose. In fact, anthropological studies are lacking, and with the exception of recent excavation, they were all, almost always carried out after the excavation. Detailed information about the bones in that context is rare. Therefore, there is relatively little data that would uh, allow us to draw a detailed and sufficiently representative picture of the burial gestures and biological data. In the burial chamber, bodies are not buried, but uh, placed in an empty space. The deceased lie on the side, curled up, without a preferred orientation, and some may have been wrapped in a soft container. In the most populated tombs, the introduction of new individuals led to tidy, uh, tidying and uh, rearrangement. Of the, of the 220 tombs excavated and documented, only 130 yielded bone remains. And for more than a third, only a few bone fragments are mentioned, some of which belong to later deposits. At most, it can be assumed that at least one individual had been deposited. Of the 66 uh, tombs for which a count, albeit pre preliminary, is available, 25 contain at least one individual, 28 contain two to six uh, individuals, and 10 tombs contain more than seven and up to 30 individuals. In the tombs, the presence of children, men, and women can be observed. This requirement suggests to the various authors the possibility that the grave group members of nuclear or extended families, also no biological or genetic analysis has yet revealed kinship relationships. The graves at Frasal genes RG6 and Rasalad HD10, respectively excavated by Geraldina Santini and Sandro Salvatori, some of which may have housed two or to three dozen individuals are exceptional examples that may be related to the intensive use of nearby coastal settlements and the small number of tombs compared to other sites. If we add the temporal dimension, which may be several centuries, the data currently available suggests that the collective character of some of these tombs lay more in the intention underlying their construction than in the reality of the deposit made there. The varying number of people uh, in the tomb for which the uh, MNI is known from one to 30 show that the effort to build a communal tomb didn't depend on needs, but probably corresponded to an ideology uh, that was shared across a very large uh, area. The dead uh, in these tombs are sometimes buried with jewelry, necklaces or bracelets of stone and shell beads copper objects and imported pottery. Intra-regional contacts are evident in the furniture buried with the deceased. For example, shell objects are found inland and copper artifacts on the coast, suggesting that this exchange was valued. At the same time, some of the product of inter-regional exchange are integrated into the burial sphere. In many of the excavated tombs, we find uh, small vessels from Mesopotamia of the Jemdet Nasser type, uh, which testify not only to a repeated exchange with this distant region, but also to the specific use for burial purposes, uh, since such vessels don't seem to be present in the rare contemporary settlement sites. A work at uh, Rasalhad, HD7, on a group of uh, affid type tombs has shown that the exterior space of the tomb was used for depositing valu valuable uh, objects and also human remains in a secondary position. In front of the tomb entrance, the bedrock had been opened up uh, and copper objects as well as several pearls and carnelian beads were uh, discovered. This deposit testified to a considerable considerable investment made in burials uh, or memori memorial uh, ceremonies. Finally, I'd like to address one of the major issues for the acid period. The question of the livelihood of the groups arise again and again, because we know of very few settlement sites that could provide information. In recent years, several approaches have been made to shed light on this question. 
using uh, ge geographical information systems. Several researchers have attempted to map, to map graves at a regional level. The aim of this work is to model the distribution of the grave and their relationship uh, with the surrounding area in order to identify the factors that may have favored the choice of location of the necropolis, and thus the, to hypothesize about the economy of, uh, of the groups and their mobility. Niwatiandam, uh, uh, in the interland, a study conducted by Nasser Al Jawari seems to indicate that the tombs were located in areas with access to water or pasture. The author infers an economy based on nomadic pastoralism. And more recently, still in the Wadi Andam, uh, in Oman, a similar study by William Deadman shows that 90% uh, of the recorded tombs are within 2.5 kilometers of farmland, but that the high point and proximity to the channels of the Wadi are particularly desirable for the construction of tombs. The author also concludes that water resource resources and grazing land are reported rather than rebel uh, land, and therefore assumes that this population based their economy on nomadic or semi-nomadic pastoralism rather than agriculture. Still in the region uh, of the Jalan, but eastward, uh, where Jessica Giro invented some 3,000 tombs, the location of the necropolis seems to coincide with areas where horticulture is possible, but large necropolises are found near lagoons on, and on uh, rocky cliffs. According to this work, it seems that the economy of this population was based on agriculture with a more sedentary lifestyle and perhaps seasonally on aquatic resources. At any rate, um, this is indicated by the study of oral pathologies that I have uh, carried out on several bronze age groups on the coast and inland at Rasaljin, Jebel Afit, and Bakhla. Agriculture in Arabia was based on the cultivation of the dat palm. Its fruit, dates, are the most cariogenic of the unprocessed food, right after the Milky Way chocolate bar, if, uh, if we can them. Because of the high carbohydrate content and soft structure that sticks uh, to the teeth. Therefore, an increase in dental disease can be expected in populations that consume them regularly. Of the pathology I have observed, some are largely due to diet, to diet and especially carbohydrate intake, but food preparation and texture, as well as dental hygiene, also play a role. This is a case with tooth decay, caries, abscesses, and tooth loss, some examples of which uh, are given there. The individuals in the aphid tomb, uh, however, don't show any pathologies that can be attributed to car high carbohydrate diet, indicating that agricultural products weren't predominant in the diet. Only later in the human period, and especially in the interior, uh, do we observe a high frequency of these pathologies. Moreover, from the half period onwards, a decrease in calculus, hypoplasia, microfractures, and stigmata uh, is observed at the site studio compared to the Neolithic period, indicating not only a change in diet, but also in its nature. These results indicate a change in the dietary habits and probably illustrate the diversity of subsistence strategy characteristics of the Afid period, a mixed economy based on coastal exploitation, pastoralism, and the beginnings of an agricultural economy. To fill the gaps regarding the Hafid tombs, I have launched a research program funded by the French National Research Agency dedicated to them. I, it will bring together several experts from the end of the year to better understand the phenomenon and distribution in the Arabian Peninsula. The main challenge is to fill the gaps in dating, to obtain data from the interior, and to map the tomb at the scale of the peninsula. I'm very interested in, in partnering with uh, the team working on this structure, so feel free to contact me uh, if I haven't already done so. During the human period from about 2700 BC, the tombs were reintegrated into the settlements 
which now consisted of villages built in a permanent form. They are much less numerous than the Hafid tombs, but much more imposing. Always built with uh, stones, they became more monumental over time. The newest ones can reach a diameter of uh, 14 meters and a height of about uh, three meters. The interior is usually divided into two, two, communicant, um, two non communicating par parts, which in turn can be subdivided. This diagram shows the different cases uh, uh, that are documented and their distribution. Uh, the facade is carefully worked and may contain decoration uh, in the low relief. The stone used for the exterior wall were uh, extracted from quarries uh, that can be up uh, to 10 kilometers away. And it's estimated that uh, uh, 16, 16 sorry, to 24 people were needed for a year to build one of these stones, including the time needed for quarrying, preparing, and transporting the blocks, assembling, and polishing. The duration of use of this tomb is estimated to be one or two centuries. This tomb has uh, one or two entrances, consisting of a removable, rem removable uh, door and some monument of decoration, usually placed on both sides of the door. In some of the excavated tomb, a system of floors, uh, that is to say a vertical partition, was also uncovered. Several hundred individuals were found in the human tombs, mostly in the form of mixed uh, mingled uh, fragments. However, in some tombs, such as uh, Tomb A uh, of North, Illinois North in the United Arab Emirates, which was excavated in the 80s by uh, Serge Clausiou and uh, Burkhard Vogt, uh, an intact deposition and level has been preserved, which allow us to uh, determine the original position of the deceased in the tomb. They were laid on their side in a protruded position uh, in the lower, uh, lower level of the tomb, while the upper level was used for the cremation of the already the individualist, uh, individualist the remains. In the tomb uh, at Tel Abrak, most of the individuals were disarticulated, but the final deposit was left in its original position. Other parts of the assemblage were reworked and reduced, probably to make uh, room in, uh, in the tomb. Recent excavation of other tombs from this period showed that the emptying of tombs was very common, uh, as at Rasaljin, Shimal, Bat, Al Sufu, or Bat Bakhla, uh, and Ili. It is therefore common to find one or more bone pits uh, near the tombs. Most of the time, these are uh, accidental finds, as the excavator are usually concentrated on, on the tomb itself. In the documented, documented uh, cases, there are simple pits uh, dug into the sand, but at the end of the Humana period, we observe the presence of, of pit uh, lined with blocks. One final aspect of the secondary treatment of corpse may be emphasized. Occasionally, cut marks on the bones have been observed in several tombs, indicating active decarnation of the remains, without it being possible to determine what the, what the role and purpose was, since these stigmata haven't been systematically researched, and the bones in this context were generally very poorly preserved. Here, I've taken the example of Pakhla, dated from the very end of the third millennium BC, an inland site where marks were observed on the frontal bone of uh, several skulls. I will now summarize the development of burial practices and biological data between the Neolithic and the early Bronze Age, which shows the social comp complexification of the time. First, if we consider these tombs from an arch architectural point of view, uh, we note that investment in the construction sig significantly increases with time. A few unskilled people and a day is enough to dig a burial pit during the Neolithic, while two dozen of qualified people are needed for a year to build a human tomb. A fit tomb lay in an intermediate position between the two extremes, few people during one month. This obviously indicates greater social differentiation during the third millennium, but the cost implied by such monumental funerary construction also shows 
how mortuary practices played a major role in how communities build their social identities. In other words, how they, represent, uh, they represented themselves. Second, the EBA uh, early bronze age stones are built uh, to last. It is a stone architecture, and their design, one or more chamber accessible by an entrance, allows to deposit successively in time several individuals. In these tombs with collective vocation, the dead are not buried in ground but placed in an empty space. So, when a new deposit occurred, the remains of the previous were probably still visible, and individuals would have been assimilated to a collective entity. Furthermore, the increase in the average number of individuals per tomb structure in the human life period is very clear. This suggests that the Neolithic, uh, in the Neolithic and Afic periods, the grouping of the dead in the same structure was limited to a restricted family unit, whereas in the human life period, it reaches a broader extent of affiliation, the, the dimension of which would be communal. Finally, uh, in order to put all this data in context with the general population dynamics in the region, I present the demographic dynamics that can be assessed with an estimator that correlates well with the growth rate. The results indicate that the Neolithic population was already growing to some extent. The dynamic, this dynamic seems to accelerate in the third millennium and reach its peak in the middle of the early Bronze Age coinciding with the uh, economic and social complexification that's evident in all the other archaeological data. The decline in, the, in the, this uh, indicator observed between Rasajins and Ili at the end of the third millennium, um, if it's not due to random fluctu fluctuation associated with sampling, would indicate a decline uh, in the rate of increase at the end of the human period. There are several explanations for this decline having to do with the birth rate, the death rate, or why not, the migration balance. Uh, for instance, an insufficient increase in resources to keep up with uh, population growth, uh, the Malthusian model, an increase in mortality associated with increased population density, which allows infectious disease to spread and sanitary condition to deteriorate. To deteriorate um, uh, we found, uh, for instance, one case of uh, tuberculosis in Bakhla, which uh, could speak to this. Social instability leading to more violence between groups, individuals, uh, and affecting the, the efficiency of the production sy system. And it's also likely that the population in Ili was particularly exposed to climatic hazards and identification due to the EV dependence on the product of the of oasis agriculture, which was the main source of food for an alien. In conclusion, uh, societies in Eastern Arabia followed original paths during early history, uh, during the plateau history, and showed adaptative and innovative skills in the face of an increasingly restrictive environment. Neolithic communities employed varied suggestion strategy in the Italian based on nomadic pastoralism, while on, while on the coast, exploitation of coastal resources enabled them to settle certain favorable areas intensively and quasi sedentarily for several millennia. These people seem to have experienced low population growth and recurrent mortality crisis due to epidemics and or episodes of famine, but also to episodes of violence probably related to conflict over the control of resources. With the emergence of the first oasis, the, the adaptation of the coast continued. Also, there were differences depending on the location, which probably depended on the role that the local population played in the regional exchange networks. Agricultural product reaches the coast, as did other commodities, but their role in diet remained limited compared to inland sites where they were predominant. It seems that this remains the case for several millennia, as ancient travelers at the time of Alexander, Alexander the Great called the people they encountered from Eastern Arabia ichthyophagus, uh, fish eaters. The improvement in living condition and cultural uh, standardization that, char that characterized the second half of the third millennium was fragile 
as the end of the early Bronze Age was marked by new socio-economic upheavals. This could be related in part to the deterioration of the climate, climates and the breakdown of transregional uh, exchanges involving local population, but probably also to the destabilization of societies in the face of increasing social differentiation. Research dealing with this transition is still in its infancy, but offer good prospect for tracing the evolution of the, of the population in Eastern Arabia. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, all the, the institutions that fund many of the field and study mission whose findings have been presented uh, as part of uh, several research programs. Uh, the local partners in Oman and in uh, Saudi Arabia, and the leaders and members of the mission in which this work was integrated. I'd like uh, also to thank all the researchers and, and students uh, with whom I've worked in the field and uh, in the laboratory over the past years. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Olivia. This was really great, this uh, big picture that you gave of your studies and um, about uh, funerary uh, uh, practices um, in this area in the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Thank you so much. So the discussion is open and uh, people can ask uh, questions. And please, those who want to ask questions, if you can, just show, show yourself so it's more dynamic. You can also chat. So I have questions, mm -hmm. several questions. First of all, uh, um, you presented some of this uh, stigmata that you found on the bones. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, one of your last slides. Did, uh, I didn't catch if you had cremation or not. Um, yes, on this side we have also cremation. Yeah, and uh, this is the case also on other sites. So, so this is a common practice, cremation. Cremation uh, occurs uh, in the secondary uh, phase uh, for the treatment of the body, um, and we found uh, example of cremation. Uh, mostly in the in the pits that are around the, the tombs. Uh -huh. so. Very interesting. Um, so are there other questions in the audience? I have questions again. <laughs> so are you um, you talked about this uh, decrease of population. I mean, it was a modelization, I think, that you, you showed at the end of the Bronze Age. Um, do you have any, uh, I suppose you have uh, ideas about why this happened at this time? Are there some causes like environment, environmental crisis or other uh, political yes. crisis or? Uh, as I as I uh, explained, uh, the problem is uh, that we have few sites for for which we have enough data for paleodemographic uh, studies, because uh, to to make such a such a modelization, we need sites with uh, at, at least uh, thirty individuals uh, represented, and no bias uh, in the recruitment. So we need to have the, the dead population, <laughs> all the dead population or a, a good sample of the dead population. So it's difficult, even if many sites have been excavated and uh, there are many burials for, for the affid, human period and the Neolithic, uh, it's uh, difficult to, to have a good picture of that. So that what I presented is, um, is what we can do with the available data for that. And uh, your question was about uh, the reason of the of the decrease at the end of the Yumana period observed uh, with the data from Ili from the tomb end. Uh, as I, as I uh, explained, uh, it could be due to to climate climatic uh, aridification or to to uh, an increase of uh, pathologies uh, with a, a density of uh, population that is uh, higher than uh, during the previous periods. 
Um, so the, uh, there are several ex possible explanation uh, and uh, more research is needed to, <laughs> to answer. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question in the, in the chat. I don't know if you can read it. It's uh, Juan Manuel uh, Tebes who's, who's asking, uh, thanks for that great presentation, Olivia. You talked about cairns being built and reused in the Iron Age. What's the percentage of new tombs versus reused tombs? Uh, I, I don't know the number in, in mind, but uh, uh, if I... If I Look, my graph. Uh, I cannot tell now, but many many tombs are reused during the, the Iron Age. Uh, it is visible not only uh, thanks to the C14 uh, dating, but also uh, because of the material found uh, that that is found uh, uh, on some graves. Uh, so I have no. No numbers now, but uh, I will find it. And you, can, you can contact me and I will uh, yeah. answer. And he's adding, and do you see a continuation of afterlife beliefs through all these times? A continuation? Um, I'm not sure of that. It's, uh, it's difficult to, to say that because we, Speaking about uh, beliefs, uh, when we are archaeologists uh, and when you are studying uh, societies without uh, writing, it's difficult. So we have sometimes some clues, some uh, evidence of uh, spirituality, as I showed for the, the turtles in Ras al Amra, but it's difficult to, to, to see that. I don't think there is a regular uh, continuity uh, during all this millennia. Yeah. 